Action. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 21 of In It To Spin It. We're behind the electric owl about to see Vancouver band War Baby open for King Tough. Last night we saw Kurt Vile at the rickshaw with Johnny DeCourcy opening. That's who we're looking at this week. He's on the show. We'll also take a look at the Volcom Singles Club. We recently received our second installment of the Volcom 2013 Singles Club. Have a look. So second delivery from Volcom this year for the 2013 edition of the Singles Club. 245s in there this time. First band is called Black Bananas. Not bad stuff. Um, Ex-members of Royal Trucks, an old school 90s drag city recording artist. Pretty good stuff, but uh, not my sort of thing. I got a low number, which is pretty cool. So I'm giving this one away. You can download it here. Check that out, nice colored vinyl of course. Second 45 is a split 7 inch coming out of uh, California I believe called The Zigzags and The Shrines. Uh, good punk on here, I prefer The Shrines one, Spit on My Life or Spit in My Life. Good stuff, good punk, uh, I'm giving that one away too, download it here. Really liking the Volcom Singles Club, hope you like the look at it. So I was fortunate enough to sit down with Johnny DeCourcy. This is the interview. Let's have a look. Hey everyone out there, we're here with uh, Johnny DeCourcy, a fantastically talented artist coming out of Vancouver that you guys need to hear. Uh, you guys, thanks for being here with us and fitting us into uh, your busy day. Say hi to everyone out there. Hi guys. Cool. Um, how long have you been playing music? Let's get into it. Uh, how did you get into music? At what age and how did it start and what got you started? I uh, started playing piano when I was six. Yeah. Uh, lessons and then started playing guitar when I was 14 in high school and kind of stopped playing piano. and. Um, really got into Van Halen and uh, yeah. Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, yeah. a lot of 80s metal, yeah, Skid Row. It's good stuff to be into. Yeah, Iron Maiden, yeah. Slayer. Nice Judas Priest. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, Judas Priest. Priest. Yeah, I saw, I saw most of those like big bands when they came here. I like, yeah. saw Megadeth a couple times nice. and Judas Priest. Never seen Iron Maiden. Were you at the uh, infamous GNR Riot show in 03? No, didn't no. go to that one. Yeah. Neither did I. I was supposed to, but didn't go. Okay, well that's a good background. Um, so you had an EP out in 2011. Mm -hmm. Then you had this Johnny DeCourcy and the Death Rangers first debut album out in late 2012, I believe. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, fantastic, fantastic record. Uh, incredible stuff on there. At times it gets very personal, sort of an unveiled uh, insight into you. And what has been the response since the release? Um. Like by people? Yeah. What what's what are you feeling out there? Like are people liking it? Or the, you... People either love it or they hate it. Yeah. I've had like um, the first review that I got on it was pretty bad review on it. Yeah. And um, that was good too. Yeah. Is that because people have this preconceived notion of your time in Black Wizard that they kind of maybe were <laughs> expecting something different, or this pop sort of seventies? Uh, sort of straightforward rock sound is kind of jarring to them because of that? Or? Uh, I don't think it had anything to do with Black Wizard. I think no. it more had to do with like the kind of music that's on that album is not really the kind of music that's really like popular or in right now. Really? I don't know. I, f I find that, you know, it's it's definitely different than a lot of the stuff that's around it's right now. Though, yeah. It's very like, like straight ahead pop yeah. and you know, like vocals very prominent and not like, you know, wishy-washy, reverby kind of, yeah. uh, whatever. So, I don't know, it's different, but 
Well, music's subjective, but I, I would uh, I'd be hard pressed to give this a bad review. I am absolutely in love with the second side, the album as a whole. But the second side is one of the best things I've heard all year, hands down. Thank Incredible, you. Incredible. Uh, stuff on there you wrote and ar arranged the entire album right yes so that's an accomplishment in itself mm -hmm. um there's super strong songwriting on there especially in the form of irma and andrea's song it's not the toys you die with but the people you know uh hit home with me that's it's an amazing philosophy for life um how long did the process uh recording and writing take for this debut album um a couple of the songs on the album are pretty old yeah. Maybe like Andrew's four years song. old. Andrew's song, Cherry Lane, and Waltz are all pretty old. They were uh, on the EP yeah. in different forms. Okay. Um, but the Andrew, rest. Andrew's song was acoustic. On the yeah, it was acoustic. Yeah. And um, the rest of the songs, maybe it took, a, like, they kind of came all together in about two months. Yeah. Like the writing of them. And then we started recording last May. Okay. So May 2012. And the recording process took from May to August. And, and that then, was at Bullies. Uh, yeah, it was it was at Bullies and at another studio in Surrey. Yeah, kind of okay. half and half. Okay. Um, during the course of the listen of the entire LP, there's some fantastic guitar tracks. Uh, there's melancholy tones throughout it. You even get into some brass on the final track. Um, panoramic view, lovers kiss. Uh, there's some dazzling guitar work on old glass. Those are all highlights for me. And you touched on Cherry Lane also came from the EP. Uh, Cherry Lane is the lead single, can we call it that? Or is yeah, it it's, a, it's a hit. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's the hit. It is the <laughs> hit. I mean, uh, I can't say enough about the song. I only saw the video yesterday, so I am all oh, yeah. in. Like, it's, it's an incredible uh, accompaniment visually to an already amazing song. The build and uh, release on the song are already they're off the charts. Release. It's amazing. <laughs> I get major goosebumps watching that one. Uh, you want to uh, share some backstory on the song Cherry Lane, what it's written about, how it was written, and how the idea for such a sort of shocking, disturbing video to go with the song came about? Um, I don't know really what to say about the song yeah. uh, or what it's about. Yeah. Because it's, it's whatever you want. It's whatever you, I don't know, it's whatever people think it's about. Um, I leave that up to them. Yeah. But, Fair um, enough. The video uh, wasn't my idea. The video was uh, a friend of mine's idea. His name's Owen Ellis. Yeah. He came up with the concept yeah. and directed it and shot it and edited it. Nice. And, and I saw in the credits your family's involved in there. Yeah, it was most of my family. That's really cool too. Yeah, Patrick and my sister, my, my dad, my brother. Yeah. They're all nurses and doctors. Yeah, it's a pretty neat video, man. It's an unbelievable song. We will uh, link that right here, you guys. It won't disrupt the interview, but it'll open in another window. We'll link that song right here. you got to check that one out. Um, in a few days' time, you're opening for Kurt Vile and the Violators at mm -hmm. the rickshaw just down the road here. Are you a fan of his, and uh, how do you feel about playing on that bill? Uh, yeah, I love, I love Kurt Vile. I really liked his, um, his album, Smoke Ring. My Halo. Okay, yeah. That was a great album. Yeah. Um, and I listened to his new album, it was good too. Yeah. I haven't listened to it as much as the other one. But yeah, I know it's it's exciting. It's great to to uh, to play with him, I guess. Yeah. And, and it'll be nice to play for people that, you know, probably don't know who I am or whatever. Yeah. Maybe even in their own city they don't know who you are. So yeah, I mean it's yeah. To piggyback on this sort of crowd. Because it's the same vein sort of stuff, I would say. Especially with Waking on a Pretty Day is the new Kurt Vile. I think it's in the same sort of, uh, uh -huh. there's an appreciation that can cross over there for sure. Um, if people are interested in seeing you live, do you have any other gigs coming up in the city? In yes, the uh, August 16th okay. at the Cobalt. Yeah. And then August 31st at, um, uh, it's called Sunfest. Yeah, I've heard that's like a ridiculous 11 a.m. start to 1 a.m. It's yeah. like 14 hours of bands, 40 and just bands. Like 40 or 50 like bands mostly from Vancouver yeah three stages two yeah. indoor one outdoor I heard yeah, yeah and we're, it's we're gonna be cool. playing outside at like seven o'clock I think nice well, yeah. I'll try what day is that again August 31st okay I'll try to get to that for sure um, yeah what do you what are you what are you listening to in 2013 right now that's uh, floating your boat here locally or globally um, last uh, last uh, 
I don't know, maybe a couple months, I mean, not a couple months, maybe like five or six months ago, I really listened to The Shins a lot. Yeah. Okay. And I've been listening to um, a Motown compilation that I got. Yeah. And that's really good. It's like 85 songs, four well, discs. Yeah. Like the all encompassing hits of Motown? Yeah, it was just all the hits. Nice. Yeah, and, that's uh, cool. That was really good. Um, and okay. the Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All these the Beatles. Nice. Well, um, I want to mention where we are right now. Pinhole Printing coming out of Vancouver. Uh -huh. That's your sort of side job or maybe even your main job at this point. I'm not sure. What yeah, the it's just the is. main supporter. But uh, currently in the process, I hope we can say this if that's cool, of printing Queens of the Stone Age um, tour posters, silk screen by you guys. Uh, artwork done by Brad Clausen coming out of Seattle, major player in the silk screen uh, band art poster game. That's really cool. If you guys, uh, any bands out there need work done, a pin holds your place. That's really cool of you. Say, maybe we should touch on the record. Um, let's touch the record. Yeah, let's touch yeah. it. Uh, it's beautifully pressed. It's uh, self-released. Comes with a awesome uh, sort of major fold-out. What's that called? Like a, a newsprint poster. poster. Yeah, a newsprint poster. I'll show you guys that uh, later. And uh, where can we buy this? Bandcamp. You can buy a Bandcamp, you can buy a Neptune, Zulu, Red Cat, um, Zoo Shop, Zoo Shop and like Sloth in Calgary. Sloth in Calgary, yeah. But for the rest of the world, 15 bucks on Bandcamp, Yeah, right? on Bandcamp, and um, yeah. Well, hit this up, I can't say enough. Uh, major talent here blossoming in Vancouver with the debut album. I uh, should say they're limited to 500, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's probably, yeah, there's probably bunch of left. Yeah, maybe. Maybe like 250. I, oh yeah? yeah? I think they'll go fast, man. Once people play more shows and people get into it, I, it's incredible stuff. So uh, essential listening for sure coming out of Vancouver. Thanks for uh, being here. Great. And uh, thank you, Patrick. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. Very proud to have a talented artist like Johnny DeCourcy a part of the show. Uh, during this little tour of uh, pinhole printing here, I got an insight into what kind of great guy Johnny DeCourcy is. Uh, I went down a hallway and I saw a poster that I immediately recognized and that I had always kind of wondered about. But it's from a Cloud Nothings show at the Media Club last year. Um, Johnny DeCourcy designed and printed this poster himself and brought it to the Cloud Nothings show without them knowing. He printed off 40 of them, gave it to them for them to sell so they could make some money. I got the band at the time to sign my poster in its entirety. Easy to say, Cloud Nothings will never play in Vancouver at a venue the size of Media Club again. I've always wondered what this marking was. Well, wonder no more. It's JDC on the back. A very cool little mystery solved for a great show in Vancouver. So, as stated, Johnny DeCourcy and the Death Rangers were gearing up for their Kurt Vile and the Violators opening slot. Really cool gig for them to get Monday, August 5th at the Rickshaw. Zen Mystery Fog also played another cool Vancouver band that did well this night. Here's the uh, set list. Unfortunately, Cherry Lane got cut, I guess, due to time restraints. So we're going to leave this one out on Irma, the uh, slow burner from Johnny DeCourcy. Enjoy. Enjoy.